Every beefy punch-happy titan player in D2 has their preferred way to play and their preferred exotic armor. But what does your favorite exotic armor pick say about you? Wonder no more. Hi, my name is Fallout, and subscribe to my channel because I told you to. If you enjoyed today's titan video, be sure to check out what your hunter exotic says about you linked below. If we get enough likes on today's video, then I will make a warlock follow-up. And with that, let's dive right in. An insurmountable skull fort. You, my friend, are a simple breed, but by no means is that a bad thing. Punching is your business, and business is good. If you're a PvE player, you acknowledge how strong the Falling Star exotic is, but everybody and their mother wears that goddamn thing. People on Twitter might actually enjoy the game more if they knew the satisfaction of swinging away into a crowd of thrall. If you're a PvP player, you probably prefer 6v6 to 3v3, and shoulder charging people gives you incredible joy. There's also a slim chance that you are just a really big Daft Punk fan. Mask of the Quiet One. You are the type of person who takes pride in being different often going out of your way to do so, and even when it benefits you in no real way. If the majority of your playtime is in PvE, you justify your armor pick by saying it looks unique and kinda badass. If you're a PvP player, you've had multiple arguments over the years with your friends about your armor pick as they beg you to try out something, anything else. But you're so committed to your rebel exotic identity though, you can't face the cold truth. Yeah, it does look cool, but your exotic is outperformed by other options in pretty much every consistent conceivable way. But hey, look on the bright side. At least no one can accuse you of being a poser. Capri's Horn. You are very quirky, maybe even borderline insane, and you've been able to achieve what thousands of D2 players have never been able to achieve. You've been able to push past the fact that you've willingly chosen to equip the ugliest exotic in the history of the franchise for what can only be described as a rare yet satisfying payoff. Solar Titan mains who equip Loralee are wannabes in your eyes, pretenders. Your Solar Titan takes actual thought to perform with, and when you manage to get a kill in PvP with your Solar Energy Wave, you shout with delight and be sure to tell your friends each and every time it happens. And they don't envy you, but they are, in a weird way, proud of you. Helm of Saint-14. One of the following statements is true. One, you are a PvE main who has been playing since vanilla D1 and you have a soft spot in your heart for popping your bubble and giggling with joy as all who enter your bubble shield are blinded. You also enjoy the simple pleasure of giving your friends an overshield as a small yet valuable utility. Number two, Helm of Saint-14 is, in your opinion, the most badass looking helmet to ever be in the game and you rock it proudly for style alone. That may or may not include the Sainted Visage cosmetic which you even wear in PvP for how awesome it looks. Or number three, you are a mega Saint-14 stan and the helmet will remain glued to your dome as a permanent tribute. A select few of you out there love him so much you wish he'd take a little time off from Fist in the Darkness and instead spend a little time at the tower fisting you. Eternal Warrior, you are certifiably no meme, dead ass insane. And I don't mean you're really good at the game, I mean you're a crazy person. In fact, I borderline doubt you even exist, but if you do, there has to be no more than a dozen of you on God's green earth grand total. And I'm not talking about the people in PvP who play the whole match with a different exotic and then right before popping their Fist of Havoc swap over to the Warrior, because a lot of people do that, and that by definition does not make you a Eternal Warrior main. To truly be a main, you have to wear this helmet literally all the time and I mean I'm sure there's got to be maybe four of you out there watching today's video right now who are unironically shouting it's me I wear it all the time and you know what honestly good for you oh what's this wow you drew this all by yourself <laughs> Look, it's you in the helmet. You know what? I'm gonna put it right up here, right on the refrigerator for everyone to see. Now go play outside, you little scamp. <laughs> Lock the door. One-Eyed Mask. You are a PvP main and an unimaginative one at that. No disrespect, of course, but come on. Deep in your heart of hearts, there's gotta be a part of you nodding along in agreement. Otherwise, you may in fact be a serial killer. You probably mained the One-Eyed Mask back when it was a meta-crushing monster of an exotic. And don't worry, a lot of people did. It eventually got nerfed and you were frustrated, but you didn't really want to have to think about going back to the old overused PvP exotics you've already grown tired of. So you kept the one eye on and you never really took it off. Here's a little tip from me to you. It does feel fun to tiptoe out of your comfort zone every once in a while. Side note, you also kind of wish that Bungie would eventually make a better exotic ornament for your beloved helmet because what they got right now is just fever dream level weird. Precious Scars, you're a trials main and damn it all if you 
aren't a creative yet devious little bastard. It ain't as wildly popular as other exotic picks out there, but you know just how strong Precious Scars actually is in the world of PvP, and you and your Trials buddies abuse that sh every chance you get, especially because most players out there almost never see it coming. You're secretly afraid that one day a ton of people will catch on to how helpful the helmet can actually be in Revive Heavy 3v3, but you go to bed soundly knowing that most players will never ease up on the death grip they have on uber meta crap like the Sightons. Lauralee Splendor. Whoa, what do we have here? A solo PvE player on a Hammer Titan build complete with a whole kit of solar elemental wells and the Lauralee helmet? Daring today, aren't we? You may mainly play PvE, and your main priority is not dying. Oh sure, you can put on the Falling Star or Heart of Inmost Light, but you fell in love with the livability factor of Lorelei, and you are hooked on that drug for life. You'd sooner go into freelance comp than unequip your magic fire helmet, and you'd rather uppercut a toddler in public than put on any build that doesn't let you make easy solar elemental wells with a throwing hammer. You probably eat the same ham and cheese sandwich every day for lunch too, you white bread Jim Halpert ass looking mother Feedback fence. All right, credit where credit is due. If nothing else, you are unique. You either overestimate the power of the exotic you wield, trying to convince your friend it's actually way better than they think, or you simply wear it for the memes. Nothing makes you chuckle like seeing your exotic actually net you a kill in PvP, and you be sure to let your homies know each and every time it happens. Your friends are right, of course. It ain't that good. And maybe you do know that deep down, but that sure as hell ain't gonna convince you to take it off. If you're a PvE player, you're 100% fed up with all the times you've been mobbed to death by a crowd of thrall, and you've grown accustomed to having permanent bodyguard level protection against red bar trash. Doomfang Pauldron. You are one of three players players. One, you are a PvP player willing to do anything you can think of to get the first super on the field, even if that happens to be a Ward of Dawn bubble in a game of Trials. That's right, no shields to throw, but you gotta be first, goddammit. Or, way more likely, number two. You're a PvE player who loves throwing shields more than a cat who loves playing with a laser pointer pen. There's no better feeling to you than having a 30 minute super duration. Or you could be number three, someone who values the fashion game above all else and who really vibes with the color purple. The only thing I know for sure is this. Whichever of the three you are, please seek help. You have family and loved ones who care about you. Syntheseps, you're a PvP main, and in all likelihood, you've been playing since vanilla. You're a filthy little shotgun ape and proud of it, boy. You scratch your head every time you see a post on Reddit or Twitter from people arguing over the power of Titan exotics like the Titan Ramparts. Why are they even wasting their breath? Syntho is not only top shelf, but unbelievably user friendly, and you're confused as to why more people simply can't figure that out with just three minutes of entering any PvP game type. Oh well, let him argue. You're too busy breaking teeth and enjoying life to care. Aeon safe. You're a PvE main, and usually you stick to Grandmaster Nightfall type content or any activity where there's a lot of champions or bosses running around. You're smart and you really enjoy burning through challenging content quickly with a fire team of like-minded individuals. You are permanently married to Sect of Insight for the ability to generate heavy ammo for the homies and you honestly can't remember what the other two options on the armor even do. Not like it matters. Ashen Wake. You're the kind of person who likes to have fun. PvE, PvP, doesn't matter. The joy of yeeting fusion grenades point blank into the face of the enemy cannot be topped at all. It's way more likely you're doing this kind of stuff in PvE, but if you are a PvP main, you probably have a lot of clips saved of you getting wild team wipes with a single grenade or Hail Mary throws from downtown. You know exactly how much damage you need to do to the other guy in PvP before they're able to be one hit destroyed by a fusion grenade and make a mental note every time you know a weak enemy is nearby and ready to be kaboomed. You know you'd probably go a lot farther in PvP with a different exotic, but goddamn are you committed to the meme? Worm God Caress. There are not a ton of you around right now, but to those of you who do wear the Worm God, you like to think back to the good old days before Bungie really went to town nerfing your favorite exotic. You very likely have a lot of saved clips laying around of you soloing dungeon or even raid bosses with a shotgun and your own throwing hammer and wish Bungie would just loosen the Worm God purse strings a little bit. You openly resent every content creator who made any type of YouTube video showing the strength of the Worm God at any point that resulted in the inevitable nerf. Ursa Furiosa. You're a PvE player who got bored of the Falling Star meta and wanted to use something a little bit more interesting. You're happy each and every time you get to use your exotic to either revive a teammate in a really dire situation, making sure to mention on the mic that your entire team would probably be wiped if it weren't for the Furiosa. You also like super chaining and orb generation in endgame PvE, and there's a slight chance that your go-to 
DPS strategy is to just have the homies shoot through your shield. And you'd never admit it out loud, but you love that that is your team's DPS strategy because when you're the guy buffing everyone's outgoing DPS, you can never be blamed or made fun of for having the lowest DPS numbers on the team. Don't worry, your secret is safe with me. Stronghold. No discussion or debate about it. You love swords. I mean, like you really love them. They're your favorite power weapon by a mile. And honestly, who the f cares if they're not always the meta pick. You can do so much with them and they're always so fun. You have a great time with them no matter what, win or lose. If you do any kind of group PVE content, you are 100% the person in the fire team always using Eager Edge to knock your teammates off a cliff or into a wall at 900 miles an hour. If you play PVP, KD, performance, or even winning the game are the furthest thing from your mind. You care only about locking up every power ammo drop and then trolling the bejesus out of the other team any way you can. Sight and Rampart. <sighs> Look, I just want to know who in your life hurt you? Why are you the way that you are? It doesn't have to be like this, you know? And believe me, I understand you're in an unwinnable situation here. You see, if you take your sightings off as an act of defiance, you know no one is going to follow through with you. It is classic Game Theory 101, so you put on your sighting when you enter trials to better deal with the other sightings that you are bound to run into. Just answer me this. When you brush your teeth, you know, like the one time per month when you do, do you look at yourself in the eyes? In the mirror, I mean. Like, how long can you hold your own gaze before a single tear rolls down your cheek? Three? Four seconds? At the end of the day, you don't have to explain any of those corner barricades to me, of course. But, you know, you will have to explain them to God. Icefall Mantle. If there's anyone out there who does not care about the meta at all, it is definitely you. You're probably a pretty fun person to game with, actually. I mean, you're not always topping the leaderboard when you do enter PvP, but at least you get a chuckle with your loadout, and at the end of the day, that's what matters the most. At least, that is what you tell yourself. No backup plans. You're a Titan player who loves to shotgun, and in all likelihood, you've been playing since vanilla D1. Yeah, there's a lot of other exotics you've fiddled around with, but no backup really allows you to just turn your brain off in PvP, and you appreciate that. And hey, it's not like you have a bad exotic equipped. Shotguns are good, probably always will be. And eh, it kind of does the work for you, so why not? Also, it looks great, and you'll be damned if you're going to put that ugly-ass one-eyed mask on your head. <laughs> also, also, your exotic did get buffed, by the way, to get a moderate bump to your AE set, and you are just now learning it for the first time via me telling you. You're welcome. Second chance. I'd like to address all six second chance mains together on today's video, if I may. All of you, bring it in. Come on, take a knee. I really respect that you love the fashion game in D2 as much as you do. Yeah, I wish more Titan exotics featured a really big shield on your arm too. I just want to let you know that you can take the exotic off anytime you want. Like if you're not taking a picture of your Titan at the tower, or if you do a PvE activity and then you want to take a pic of your Guardian at the final loot chest, you can use a different exotic and then put the second chance on at the end for the picture. All right, just so you know. Good talk, everyone. Get out there and keep being you. Point contact cannon brace. In all likelihood, you're a PvE player and you think Thunderclap is the most fun thing Bungie has added to the Titan kit in a hot minute. You really lean into the power fantasy of being the punching class, and the point contact is a long-awaited answer to your very weird prayers of more punch fantasy. If you play Super Smash Bros. any generation at all, you play Captain Falcon. You know, that or you just think it looks really dope. And you know what? You ain't wrong. Crest of Alpha Loopy. You are a day one D1 player, and you'll be goddamned if Bungie hasn't put out a better look Titan exotic in the history of the franchise. Clean, shiny, badass. Loopy is everything you would want in your Titan's overall fashion game of being a powerful space knight. Deep down, you wish that Bungie would buff Loopy because, I mean, yeah, it's not a bad exotic. You love that healing pulse for sure. But you want to really be able to pop off and look good at the same time. Sometimes you just look at your Titan in the menu and goddamn, do you look good. Actium War Rig. You're a PvE player and you can't be bothered. Oh, what's that? Your teammates are telling you from an Astacross video that the encounter you're about to do goes really easy with Gallarhorn and Double Hothead? Well, f sucks to suck, bro, because you ain't taken off that War Rigs NFH combo hell or high water. Reloading is for nerds, and I mean, come on, look how easy this is. Just hold the trigger down on Zeno. It does all the work for you. Look, I don't even like auto rifles, but I'll use that 
too, because look how long I can shoot for. Hello, Fireheart. I'm gonna be real. I don't know actually what kind of person out there is unironically rocking the heart going into 2023. I got 10 bucks that says you just love the fact that your Titan has a cool looking piece of chest armor with fire in your belly, and that is good enough for you. You hold on to your super intentionally in PvE so you can spam solar abilities like a maniac. Same thing goes for mayhem, by the way. God help you. Not exactly a wild strategy, but you have your fun. Armamentarium. Other players think hard, think too much. They have one grenade. You have two grenade. Two grenade more than one grenade. You throw more grenade than they throw. Other players jealous of two grenade. You throw two. You have big fun. Grenade good. Fire bad. Heart of inmost light. <laughs> Oh man, all right, let's put all our cards on the table right here. We both know that Bungie is hands down nerfing this shit any day now. And deep down, you know, you know it needs to be nerfed. But on God, if you aren't gonna shed tears when that day comes, you are an absolute meta slave. A deadly, efficient, optimal, savage titan for sure. But you absolutely must use the top shelf option, the top tier pick, the cream of the crop. You have an arc 3.0 build saved on dim and you grin from ear to ear as you sit back and let your over destructive storm grenades lay waste to anything in front of you. You got elemental wells, jolt, and ionic traces all going at the same time. You're pretty much if Thor entered endgame PvE. Believe me, I'm right there with you, buddy. Chuck them storm grenades till the cows come home and have fun while it lasts, because that bungee judgment cometh and that right soon. Severance and closure. You prioritize having fun over the meta, but even with that in mind, you'll still go balls deep with build crafting your titan. After all, you want to make sure you can do everything in your power to throw out just one finisher and wind up nuking half the room. Anything you can add to your lovely little explosion death build is icing on the cake and you delight at finishing anything and everything you can. You also kind of enjoy the fact that because not a lot of other people out there wear the enclosure kind of makes you more unique. Hashtag not like the other titans. Falling Star. Endgame PvE builds that feature anything more complicated than flying headfirst into a giant raid boss straight up gives you a nosebleed. And honest to god, I want to be mad at you for turning your nose up at any player out there recommending a fun non-falling star build, but I really can't. I actually don't blame you because yeah, you might be a boring, basic, uninspired, no imagination enemy smasher, but hey, you're right. Why overcomplicate things with any other exotic when you can just hit one button and activate your meteor that killed the dinosaur cosplay. You'll have that thing glued to your chest until Bungie either nerfs it or invents an exotic that is somehow stronger than the falling star, god forbid. Or Frost Z. You are just the worst kind of person. You know just how good the Horfrost is in 3v3, especially when you and your two other deviant sicko friends don the same exotic and join you in your godless debauchery. You play trials, but again, you only really have fun when you're running stacked with your boys, all of you making and breaking crystal and milk in the clock for all it's worth. Maybe one day the rest of the player base will figure out how obnoxiously effective this exotic really is. But until then, you will continue to bully. You might be a jerk, but look on the bright side. At least when you're burning in guardian hell, you'll have a way to keep yourself cool. Lion Rampant. I don't think people really understand just exactly how much you hate jumping puzzles. You probably had a bad experience in a raid one time, maybe where your team was waiting forever for you to just platform your way across the Oryx dick wall room, and you vowed at that very moment moment that the lion rampants would never leave your thick meaty thighs. You're still not terrific at jumping puzzles, but you're not the one that holds up the group anymore, and you'll take that for sure. If you play PvP, you straight up love to spank people from the air with hipfire DMT and wonder why more people don't use this extremely fun tactic. Peacekeepers. You know that SMGs, despite having the fundamental drawback of not being able to peek shoot like hand cannons, are still awesome in PvP. You also really hate it when you completely botch a 1v1 hand cannon duel, and it's probably happened one too many times for your liking. In in response, you slapped on the peacekeepers and you've been having a great time ever since. And yeah, it blows when you get out primaried from a guy 40 meters deep with a god roll rose, but all it takes is just one moment of you winning that same duel up close for you to feel good about your exotic pick. You have a wide variety of god roll SMGs stashed away, including Shira, Multimock, even Cold Front. You pray every night that Bungie never takes a really close look at the Terabah because you're in a very select group of people who know 
how truly broken it really is. Dune Marchers. I need every Dune Marcher main out there to really understand that not only do I have a deep respect for their playstyle, but I hate them with every fiber of my being. You are a PvP player and you are good. You know the best angles on every map to sail around the corner from 90 feet up in the air and devastate the enemy team. Bungie's tried to nerf your precious baby many a time and they just can't quite get the formula right. But hey, no skin off your nose, dive bombing people in PvP gives you unspeakable joy. Every now and then you get too aggro in PvP and push into really dumb situations that get you killed while your teammates yell at you for pushing too hard. But they quickly change their tune after your wildly OP exotic locks up yet another flawless trials card. MK44 stand asides. To you, shoulder charging ain't just an option in the Titan toolkit. It's a way of life, boy. You're not exactly a patient person, but at least you're aware of it. You would rather sit through a two hour timeshare presentation about owning one tenth of a beach house in Greenland than sit in the back of the map in PvP while people pop out and tickle each other with scout rifles. Live or die doesn't really matter to you. Charge in there like the conductor of the pain train and shoulder charge and or shotgun anyone in your way. Antaeus Wards. You're a PvP player and you are one of the following without question. One, the type of player who knows that even if you're able to reflect even only one hand cannon bullet during a 1v1 duel, that could net you the win and small moments like that are why you wear the exotic. Or two, you are a supreme meme lord who gushes with delight each and every time you reflect anything at all back at the enemy. Not only do you welcome the challenge to reflect things, you go out of your way to clip farm. Jotun, rocket launchers, Nova Bomb, Golden Gun, you will stop what you're doing and head directly at the other player for even a chance at completely embarrassing them. Not only do you do this on the regular, you have a folder on your PC jam packed with clips of you netting the most ridiculous kills imaginable via Antaeus. There is no option three. Peregrine Greaves. Much like the MK44 folk, you love to shoulder charge. However, you've also got a bit more of a flair for the dramatic, and you much prefer actually connecting with said shoulder charge rather than just giving you extra protection for a shotgun push. You're a purist in that regard. The smack sound of whacking an enemy guardian in PvP with your shoulder charge is the most satisfying noise in the world, and you won't be told otherwise. Every time an enemy player pops their super, your heart skips a beat, and you immediately try to calculate how to approach that player in a way that will allow you to safely shoulder charge kill them from the air. You don't always succeed, but you always go for it, much to the delight of your teammates when you pull it off, or they're groaning when you fail. You also think that Peregrine is one of the best looking Titan exotics in the game, and you'd be right. Phoenix Cradle. If you're a PvE player, Player, you really love using sunspots whenever you can, but you don't go full on sellout like your average Laurely helmet main. You like being a little different, a little more creative. If you're a PvP player, you prefer sixes and try to share your sunspots with teammates at literally any and every opportunity. Yeah, it requires a little communication and coordination, but you love the payoff of your sunspot strat getting you the win. There's also a strong chance that you're a big fan of using Jotun in PvP, and a thin but very real possibility that you're one of the people out there who actually ordered the bungee toaster. Path of Burning Steps. You are the Joker of D2. And by that, I mean literally every person who has ever played even five minutes of D2 PvP has run up against an annoying stasis player. But whereas other folk simply chalked it up to having a bad day, man, your bad day really pushed you over the edge. You prefer using cracked solar weapons if you can, including but not limited to Igneous Hammer, Drang, the BXR, and Terava. Every time you enter a PvP match, you check the other team to see how many of them are running stasis, and if any of them are, to you, it's showtime. If enough people hit the like button on today's video, I'll go ahead and complete the trilogy by making a video for Warlocks. Remember to click subscribe if you're new, and I appreciate you. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on stream.